Hi, good evening everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Art Kesti, her YouTube channel on YouTube. Uh, to subscribe, press the red button on your right or on your left. You can press the thumbs up or thumbs down for dislike or a like. You could also leave a comment. All comments are duly welcome and much appreciated. Thank you so much. My topic today, it's about um, a young father who murdered two of his uh, three sons in Bayesa State. Uh, just, uh, he lived in Agbokiri, uh, a suburb just outside Yenogua, which is the capital of uh, Bayesa State. Um, he murdered his sons. Uh, he murdered two of his sons. Um, due to the prophecy he got from his uh, pastor. And the pastor's name would be, uh, he calls himself a uh, pastor, Apostle George Adoko of the George Adoko Outreach Ministries based in Bayesa State in Yenogoa. Um, he went to church on this faithful day and uh, he obviously went to see the pastor as usual. We know how it is. Well, we've got issues and we need to sort it out. And his pastor uh, told him uh, that he had a prophecy for him and that uh, the reason why things are the way they are for him is because his three sons are demons. Uh, what we don't know is that we don't know if the pastor said to him, your three sons are, are demons, get rid of them. All he said was that the pastor told him and gave him the prophecy. So we don't know the reason why he took the severe and extreme action that he took to murder his kids. He's got three lovely uh, boys with the... Uh, uh, accomplice. He is, he had an accomplice with him, which uh, uh, he was his his cousin. He took his three sons into the bush and tied them. The three of them tied them to a tree in the bush and gave them poison to drink. He forced them to drink it, and they all drank it. And they drank the poison, and the poison is called sniper. It's very lethal and it's dangerous. And the uh, sniper poison is used to kill uh, roaches. When you have got cockroaches in the house, we all we all know what roaches are. They are kind of like a pest, and they spread diseases, and they lay eggs. And once you got one in your house, it goes everywhere. And so that, that is the poison he gave his own kids, his own three sons, to drink, and they drank it. His sons were from the ages of 14 to 10. The two younger ones, 10 and 12, died. And the 14-year-old managed to lose himself and escape. And why he escaped because of the poison, he's only 14, he fell by the roadside and collapsed. A good Samaritan, a passerby, saw him and picked him up and took him to the hospital in Yenogua. And he's currently receiving treatment. And so they've been able to pump out some of the uh, poison from, from him, but they cannot establish how much or how much amount of the liquid uh, the poor boy uh, took. But he's recovered now. He's gained consciousness uh, and he's able to talk. And so he narrated the story to the uh, medical staff at the hospital and they called the police in and he made a statement. And he mentioned his father's name and his father's cousin, uh, which will be his uncle, 
Presently, um, the question would be, where wo uh, was the mother of these uh, three young boys? According to reports, he, the father, Mr. Simon Otasi, his name is Simon Otasi, the father who allegedly killed two of his three sons, separated from his wife, who is the mother of his sons, alleging that she is a witch and that their mother were the ones who transferred it to his three sons. And they are the cause of all the problems he's going through. This brings me into questioning. How vulnerable are Christians in Nigeria? How far would you go to believe everything your pastor says? Pastors will say, God prophesied to me. Christianity has gone to another platform, another level entirely. People are so desperate to get themselves out of the situation they are. And they will believe anything a pastor says. I'm not saying all pastors are like that. I'm, I'm referring to some of these pastors who take advantage of their vulnerable congregation and church members and followers. And because people are hungry, and when, when someone is so hungry, you will do anything. You will believe anything because you want to get out of the poverty. You want to get yourself to a very comfortable uh, place. And you will do anything to get yourself out of that situation. And when these pastors come and they tell them all these fabul stories and cock-ups, they believe. You know, my, uh, my take is, I think Christians, especially this evangel evangelical, apostolic, uh, new age Christians who go to big churches, you got to be careful. You got to be on guard. Anything you need is in the Bible. Read the Bible. Believe in your faith. Kneel down and pray to God. He will hear you. He would not abandon you. Yeah? Nobody can be responsible for your situation when the economy in the country in which you live in is not being run and managed by the people you voted and said they were competent and you put them in power. That's the problem. Not your children, not your neighbor, not your relative, not your father, not your mother. In Rwanda, recently, the president of Rwanda, Rwanda an East African country, closed down more than 750 Christian churches and mosques in his country. And he said his people in Rwanda do not need that because it's a small country. They don't need all that. You build all these big churches and you put churches everywhere and you find it difficult to manage and you siphon and take every single penny from the most vulnerable citizen because you say, pay your tithes. I wish we could have a president like that in Nigeria that will only give you license and check you properly to open your church. When you go to the streets of London, when you go to the streets of Nigeria, in a building you have about four or five churches. Why? Why do you need all that? Why do you need about four or five churches? When you all take off the same Bible and you read and you call in Jesus' name and you say Jehovah. Why? Because there is no unity. Everybody is in the business. Most, not, I will reframe that word. Some pastors, some people who claim to be pastors, 
who claim that they have been ordained by God run the church like a business and not because they're necessarily or they have been ordained by God or called by the Holy Spirit. I'm not judging, but from their fruits, you will know them. Christians, I ask and I plead, not all Christians, some Christians don't be vulnerable. The Bible is there. Read it. If you can't read your Bible the old-fashioned way, go to the internet center. It's in, it's in your mobile phone. It's, on, it's in the internet. Read. Listen to Christian shows on TV. You can clip from one channel to the other. There are messages there. <laughs> In my home, I don't go to Nigerian pastors' channels. I don't. Because when I do, I get miserable and depressed. I go to other channels from abroad. Because what they do is to give you confidence and hope. When you, when you listen to their sermon and see what they are doing in poor communities, like the 700 Club, for, for example, you see how they reach out to the poor, to the needy. That is Christianity. I cannot understand the reason why at this time and age when Jesus even said it in the Acts of the Apostles that people will perform miracles in his name but we should, be, we should be very careful. We should be very much aware and beware of false prophecies and false pastors because that is the sign of the end time. I feel sorry for those two young kids who lost their lives. May their soul find eternal peace in Jesus' name. And for the one who survived, I pray all that poison should be purged out of him and he should be in good hands and taken out of the hands of his father and his father's family. This is where I'm asking, is there anything like child protection in Nigeria? Is there anything like social services in Nigeria? Is there anything like protection for vulnerable people, which is the young people, that's young kids and elderly people within, in, in, in the police force, like a unit who deals with that, who protects vulnerable children? Because you hear this all over, all the time. In Africa, this witch, that witch, it needs to stop. We need, Africa needs to take themselves out of the dark ages, please. Not all churches are real. Not all pastors have been called to do the work of God. Not all pastors are filled with the Holy Spirit. Not all pastors are men of God as they proclaim they are. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not Miss Moral, but I, I just, there are so, so many things going on right now. We need to be careful as Christians. Have a great day. Bye-bye.